It's hard to do test-driven development if you're the only person on your team who's doing it. Believe me, I've been that person. In a previous video, I showed you how you can use the online tool CyberDojo for personal TDD practice. And in this video, I'll show you how much more fun it can be if you can get a group together, like your team, and use CyberDojo to set up some friendly competition and group TDD training. Hi, I'm Emily Bache. I'm a software developer and creator of Saman Coaching. If you like what you see here, please subscribe to my channel and like the video. With a developer practice like test-driven development, you only get some of the benefits as an individual. The design improvements multiply if everyone in your team is working this way, and you can collaborate more effectively over code and tests. CyberDojo was invented by John Jagger as a tool for group practice. And you'll almost certainly learn more from the people around you than you would just from solo practice with reflection. And it's much more fun. CyberDojo has several features that I'm going to showcase today for group practice. There's the shared dashboard. You can use that for friendly competition. And also group review and reflection. If you point your browser at cyberdojo.org, you'll find the public server. And if you're using this at work or at a paid training, you'll need to buy a license for that. Otherwise, you could just host your own server and there are instructions about how to set that up linked from the homepage. If you're more than two or three people, then I recommend trying out the CyberDojo group practice features. It's more fun, especially if you're all in the same physical space. I mean, meeting in person is just more rewarding. It's really what CyberDojo was designed for. The organizer or the technical coach will be at the front with their laptop connected to a big screen that everyone can see. And then everyone else splits into pairs or trios comfortably sharing a computer. If you're lucky, there'll be drinks and snacks and friendly banter. Recently, I did one of these with my local Gothenburg Python user group. And we use CyberDojo for a group exercise like this. Let me talk you through how it works. As the session facilitator, I do a bit of preparation beforehand. I'll go into CyberDojo and create a new practice. I'll choose a suitable Carter and a suitable programming language for the group. And then on this page where it says you've got the choice of ensemble, classroom or solo, if I'm gonna do this in a group, I'll choose the classroom option. It takes you to this page then, which shows this practice ID. Everyone who's going to take part will need to get access to this so that you're all going to work in the same CyberDojo classroom. Actually, that's a bit like saying pin number or ATM machine because the word dojo refers to the place where you're going to practice, like a classroom. So when you say CyberDojo classroom, it kind of means online classroom, classroom. Anyway, when you get to your physical space and meet your group, you can use some kind of, I don't know, group chat to share the URL with everyone who's there, or just put this up on the shared screen. Ask everyone to go to cyberdojo.org and click enter existing practice. And then they need to type in the ID. So one person in the pair can look at the big screen and just read out Charlie, Romeo, nine, kilo, x-ray, x-ray. The other person can just type it in. Each pair is then assigned a different avatar animal within the dojo and their own coding environment. And they can get started doing TDD. In my previous video about CyberDojo, I showed all of those features that CyberDojo has to help with solo TDD practice. And the pairs can take advantage of all of those. Okay, so now as a facilitator, you're faced with a room full of people happily doing TDD in pairs. And your job is to make that TDD practice even more effective. That's where the dashboard comes in. You can put this up on the big screen and it will show the rows of traffic lights for all of the participants. You can use this to spot where there are problems and proactively go and help people. Perhaps one of the pairs is trying to take too big a step and doesn't run the test for ages. So their row will not show any new traffic lights at all. So you could spot that and work out which pair it is and go and help. You perhaps need to remind them, don't try and work too much code at once. TDD is about small steps, running the tests often. Another problem that you can spot easily is if a pair is struggling with the programming language and they've got a syntax error they don't know how to fix. They'll get a long row of yellow traffic lights. You might know the programming language a little better than they do. You might be able to help them spot the problem or just advise them to revert to the latest screen and try.
try again. You might also spot a pair with a long row of red traffic lights. And that could indicate they wrote a test that was too big and that they can't make it pass in one step. Could be a good moment to go and talk to them, share your concerns and suggest that perhaps they revert and write a simpler test. If you've got a group that's already fairly good at TDD and doesn't need much help, then there are new possibilities that open up. You could set up some friendly competition with a dashboard up on the screen, call for everyone's attention and read out the scores like this. Bees, you've taken 10 steps. Elephants, though, have got 24. But the current winners are butterflies with 34 steps. Bees, you've got some catching up to do. Then let them get on with it. You can perhaps check again towards the end of the session and see if the butterflies are still in the lead and what the scores on the doors are. What you're trying to do here is encourage people to take more, smaller steps, which is a sign of more competent TDD, which you're trying to encourage. Another kind of friendly competition that you can set up is a collective green attempt. So again, you're going to stop everyone for a moment and draw their attention to the dashboard and say something like, these teams are not green at the moment. We've got bee, kingfisher and bear, but these ones are green. Use the avatars for your session. I'm setting a timer for three minutes and when it pings, I want all the pairs to be green. Help one another with that. So this is encouragement for everyone who isn't yet green to get to green quickly. And if they're already green, then they've just got to do some refactoring for a bit. If when the timer rings, the group achieved it, everyone is green on the dashboard, reward yourselves with applause, or if you've got snacks available, hand them round. But if even one pair is still in a red state, say better luck next time and let them all carry on coding. Try and keep it friendly. You don't want to shame people. Everyone learns better with a bit of specific feedback, but not if they feel like it's a punishment. Rather, commiserate, emphasize how close they were and that they're doing really well learning TDD. Acknowledge everyone was doing their best. You could try another collective green attempt later on in the session. And if you've done your job as a facilitator well, people will react happily to that suggestion. They'll be enthusiastic about getting it next time. Towards the end of the session, it's a good idea to stop coding and everyone spend some time reflecting on how it's gone. You can stop the dashboard from updating, click this checkbox, and draw everyone's attention to the shared screen. Perhaps you could pick out one avatar with a particularly good record and highlight their TDD cycles for the group. And then ask a question along the lines of, well, what can we all do to improve our TDD cycles? and have people talk in pairs about how the session has gone for them. They can click through their own list of traffic lights, recap their TDD session, and perhaps work out if something went wrong. At the end, bring everyone back together again. And if anyone wants to share their brilliant solution to the Carter or their beautiful test designs with the group, they don't actually have to bring their laptop to the front and plug it into the big screen. It's very quick and easy with CyberDojo just to click on their avatar and then you're showing all their code to the room. Now, one of the reasons these avatars are animals rather than actual names of people is because it makes it a bit less personal when you're pointing out who's doing well and not so well. People do learn better when they feel safe and supported. And you don't want to expose anyone personally as any kind of failure or splash their code all over the shared screen without warning them. Try and turn up the good. Show people's code if they volunteer it and don't generally share with a group who was which avatar. CyberDojo was designed as a tool for group TDD practice. It's a fun way of raising competency and fluency with everyone learning together. I hope you'll give it a try with your team. Happy coding. <laughs>